Good morning everyone. Hi, hello, my name is EJ and I am back again with another narrated art time lapse video. Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> I haven't done one of these narrations in quite some time. I've just simply been putting regular time lapses of my artwork. Um, I'll explain that. Um, I'll, exp <laughs> I'll give you guys the reason why in a little bit, but for now, let's just go ahead and just talk about what's going on in the video. Because there's going to be a lot of things that's going to be happening in the first three minutes of this video. So currently right now, I am working on Blender. I am prototyping a 3D scene, uh, creating it real quick. And then right now I'm flashing an image uh, on the screen on top of Krita. Uh, I'll explain that particular image uh, in a little bit. Uh, for now, right now, I'm just going to go ahead and just explain what I'm doing in Krita. In Krita, I took that rendered scene from Blender, uh, drew an outline on top of it, and then now I'm coloring it and smudging it. And then as soon as I'm smudging it, I am going to basically detail this piece. It's a speed paint. I think roughly this piece took me about two and a half to three hours. Uh, so when I'm creating this piece, I basically just wanted to get the full idea of the scene um, and whatnot. And then as soon as I finish this particular speed paint, um, I am going to go back to Blender. Uh, well, before all that happens, I'm going to flash a particular image or a, the image of the finished uh, speed paint. Uh, in just a sec um, I'm sure I'm gonna flash it in the next 30 seconds or so right now I'm doing some warm-up sketches that is kind of part of this scenario and there you go there's the finished version of the speed paint um, but yeah that was like a warm-up thing that I was doing at one point that I figured I'd add on to here because it kind of relates to what I'm doing basically with this particular illustration and so yeah, after that speed paint, I decided to develop the piece some more. So I went back to Blender, added some more details on my 3D models. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm just, you know, seriously like speed modeling. <laughs> I'm just trying to do this models as fast as I can. Uh, and then I'm going to get a good render out of this again. Um, I didn't move the camera and the camera is pretty much set like the way it was uh, as it was before. Um, and the lighting is also the same. I didn't really change a whole lot. Or actually, I didn't even change the lighting. I kept the lighting and the camera the same. All I did really was just added more to the models because I really wanted this fully detailed and I really wanted to get a good idea on the whole scene or I wanted to get a good idea of the scene. Uh, and then after this particular 3D, uh, setup that I'm doing I'm going to get I'm obviously going to get a render out of it and then I take that render um, and put it back into Krita um, which is what's happening right now and then I'm gonna slowly proceed with this very very lengthy session of really detailing this piece out with a good line sketch um, I remember I almost wanted to say it was like a three month session of me just um, working on this line sketch. Um, I would work on the line sketch for anywhere between 20 to 40 minutes at a time and it stretched out for like maybe a period of three months. I don't even remember. It was a long time because um, I worked on this sporadically for the past two years. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, in the next few minutes, what you're going to be watching is just me just slowly working on my line sketch and just really detailing out this particular scene. And then after I detail out the scene, I'm going to go back, somewhat recolor it. I, I'm literally watching this video after I just edited it. So my memory is kind of fuzzy as to what steps I took next. Um, but from what I remember, I did recolor it, but not quite as much. I think I combined like the old color with the new color. Um, and then I smudged it all together. Uh, and then after I smudged it all, I ended up with this base paint. Uh, and then after the base paint, I started detailing on top of the base paint. So it's my standard process where 
I basically try to get a base paint or like the very very base layer with every information that is in there uh, so there's like the lighting information and the color information and really the only thing that I needed to do on that base layer is to basically just add the details and kind of sharpen things out because uh, everything's fuzzy at that point so yeah my standard routine that if you've seen uh, me do or if you've seen any of my time lapses you've seen me do it before um, and if you've had the chance to listen to any of my time lapse videos then you would have been able to know that that's my standard process um, so yeah I smudge everything into this one good nice layer and then I have a base paint to uh, put my detailing on so anyways yeah so that's what's going to be happening in the next few minutes now that i've talked about the process i think we can go back and rewind and talk about a certain few things that has happened to me um in relation to my artwork and in relation to my youtube videos and whatnot uh so uh, first off is obviously i've just been sticking to regular time lapses um the reason being is really the simple reason for it is just time uh when it boils down to it time is very very limited i don't have that much time and if push comes to shove if i have to make a choice between creating educational videos or creating art i think i'm pretty much gonna stick to creating art and uh, art is always going to be my first love even though i had a background in teaching uh, as much as i would love to teach um yeah <laughs> my my main emphasis is really the creation process and, and the good thing about just the time lasses that i've posted on here even if i don't have the narration part even if i don't have the explanation part of what's going on in the video just watching the video in and of itself you know most people could pretty much decipher what's going on in the video uh especially if you're an intermediate artist or even a beginner artist you could kind of get an idea of some of the steps that i've done to create my piece so yeah uh, so yeah, the time lapses help. Uh, it still does provide uh, an educational value, even if I don't have the narration. Uh, the narration definitely does help because um, it does provide a little bit more insight than just watching something. Uh, the only tricky part about the narration part is that there's just so much information that I really wanted to mention in any given videos, but there's just never <laughs> enough time to to just explain everything and to just talk about everything especially in a 30 minute video i don't want to seriously bore you guys too much with everything i wanted to say so yeah but yeah um so yeah time is basically my biggest nemesis i don't have a whole lot of time i wish i have a lot more time to spare to do my narrated time lapses like i used to a year ago um but for now we have this particular video and who knows maybe every now and then i'll just pop in to go say hi hello here's another narrated time lapse yay good for us you can hear my voice again yay um so yeah that's been the scenario as of late now um going back to this particular illustration and going back to what happened in the first five minutes there's a lot of things that happened in the first five minutes and those particular two images that I showed that I flash on the screen so um to quickly briefly explain my art process and what my art practice is I typically have um how do I put this uh I typically have at least one or two illustrations that I'm working on actively that is what I call a long grind. Uh, I've mentioned this before in some of my videos. There, so basically my practice is divided into like two, my digital art practice, just to clarify, because I do have a tra traditional art practice and the, the, my traditional art practice, I don't really post a whole lot of my traditional artwork. Um, in this video simply because they're more private um, my traditional pieces is really more personal <laughs> so it's about my family and so I typically don't post it here in uh, my social media 
But when it comes to my digital practice, I it basically have my digital practice divided into kind of like two modes. Uh, I have the long grind. I love, 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 love doing the long grind. Uh, and to explain the long grind, basically the long grind is any piece of artwork that I worked on for more than 10, 15 hours. The majority of my long grinds have always been 20 plus hours. Um, it, it's I love doing it. I'm not going to lie. Uh, some of my better pieces have all been long grinds. Now I've had a, a lot of of long grinds that just did not come out good. Did not come out as great as I hoped it would be. Um, but my success rate for the long grinds have been really, really good. A lot of the pieces that I do where I worked on it for 20 plus hours, they, they just come out really good. And this is basically one of them. Um, it started out as a speed paint, um, which again, going back to my other mode of work. So I have the long grind and then I have the speed paint. Um, basically, the speed paint is just it's just a different way of saying sketches. Uh, you could pretty much say speed paint is a sketches. I know speed paint has been thrown around a lot, especially in the YouTube community. Most people think that a speeded up video of an art process is called speed paint. That's not the speed paint I refer, I'm referring to. The, the speed paint I'm referring to is any work done in less than five hours. It does not necessarily mean like a speeded up video of an art process like this one. Um, I consider those to be time lapses, not speed paint, but some people would call it a speed paint. So when I use the word speed paint, I really refer to any artwork that's done in less than five hours. Uh, five hours is kind of like a mark I've given myself. But really, if you ask a lot of speed painters, a lot of speed painters would say it's really more two to three hours. So any artwork done in about two to three hours it would be considered speed paint. Um, a five hour mark is too much of a stretch um but i have done like five hour speed paints um and i still kind of consider them speed paints because really you could work on the, on a piece for five hours in one sitting basically the way i consider it is that any piece of artwork that you finish in one sitting is basically a speed paint and a lot of people can work for five hours straight and just be fine. Um, so yeah, in that case, then that would be a speed paint. But doing an artwork for like eight, ten hours is literally impossible. Because at that point, if you're working in that same piece over and over again, you're just you're just brain dead. <laughs> you can't process anymore because that's a really long time to be staring at one piece. Honestly, staring at a piece for five hours straight is really, really antagonistic i guess is a good way of putting it. it it's hard it's all i gotta say um so yeah but the way i consider it is that anything done less than five hours would be considered a speed paint so anyways my practice is divided between speed paint and long grind and for the past two years i've only been stuck with one long grind which is this particular piece this particular piece is called temple waterfall it started out as a sketch from the daily spit paint group um that was the very very first image i flashed uh it was a pen and watercolor sketch um and I really loved that sketch and I looked at it and I was like, hey, maybe I could develop this. And so I ended up developing it in a three hour speed paint. That was the second image that I flashed. Then I looked at it and I just felt like I could add more to it. And so I did. <laughs> and so I ended up basically, you know, taking that three hour speed paint and just really just adding to it. And as you can see, I added so much more details on it and I love it. I really love this long grind. Um, I think the last long grind that I did was Proving Gowns. Was it Proving Grounds? I can't even remember. It's been a while back. And Proving Grounds came out okay. Like I just thought that it was all right. And I, I know I posted the video of it, but I don't remember if I did a narrated time lapse of it. I don't think I did. But proving grounds was just like an okay piece and then i think the one before that was wow what was the long grind before that i don't even remember um 
Wow, yeah. It's been a while back. I can't remember. I, I wanted to say it's Valley of the Runes or Valley of the Rules, but I don't think that's the case. Um, but anyways, uh, just going back to what I was saying and what I was trying to get at was that the last grind that I did was Proving Grounds and that came out okay. Um, I mean, it, it looked great. It looked awesome. Um, I, I don't think I could justify the amount of time I put in it for what the result was. But I mean, it was still a great practice nonetheless, you know, and then for this one, I, I really love, I really love doing this. I really love the result of it. I thought that it came out really, really good. Also on a side note though, even though some of my long grinds don't necessarily, uh, like some of the long grinds uh, that I've done, I don't end up liking. Um, even though that that's the case, even though I put out a piece and work in a piece for like 35 hours or so or 40 hours or so and it, it ends up not coming out as good as I thought yeah it, it is a little disappointing for me when that happens but on the same token I actually love just doing the grind on it just simply because it's it's almost zen um is the only way I could put it because when I work on a piece for that long and all I'm doing is detailing like it's so much more relaxing rather than say doing a speed paint because when I'm doing a speed paint or like the first initial hours of like a long grind, uh, it, it's so technical, right? Like I'm thinking of a lot of things. I'm considering a lot of things. I'm trying to troubleshoot a lot of things. Um, so there's a lot of subconscious I, I wanted to say it's a conscious thought but not really it's not really a conscious thought in my head because half the time i'm kind of just like you know winging it like i'm just going with my gut instinct basically um but yeah in in a speed paint or like the first few hours of a long grind it's it's a lot of technical stuff you know but as soon as that technical stuff is done and all I'm left with is the detailing process. It's just so, so zen. Because at that point, I don't have to worry about a lot of the things that, you know, you had to worry about at the very beginning of the illustration process. I don't have to worry about the lighting. The lighting has been done. The lighting has been set. I get a good idea of what the light's going to be. Um, Perspective-wise, had been troubleshooted. Uh, or, you know, I've already gone through troubleshooting the perspective. So, like, I don't have to worry so much about that. It's just straight up detailing. That's what we're looking at right now. You can see that, you know, I'm going section by section. I'm working on this one column right now. As soon as I detail this one column, I'm going to jump to another area that's fuzzy. You can see I went back to the ceiling because that ceiling, the top left ceiling was fuzzy. So, I detailed that. And then somehow I decided to go back to the waterfall. I didn't know why I did that huge jump. But yeah, this part that we're watching right now is just bliss because at this point I'm just in automatic mode and it's just, it's just fun. So yeah. Anyways, we're just going to go ahead and just watch this piece for now. And then in a little bit, I'll come back on and talk some more about how I feel overall about this piece.
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, start talking again about this piece uh, before this piece ends because uh, I do believe we only have like about a few more minutes left before this video wraps up. So typically towards the end of my narrated time lapse videos, I come back on to talk some more about my thoughts um, about the piece and what I did good and what was bad and what I could improve on, yada, 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 that kind of deal. It's just basically a self critique of sorts. And so, yeah, here we go. My self critique on this piece. Um, I love this piece. I already mentioned it before that little mini break that we have. Um, I believe that this piece came out really awesome. I'm glad that I spent two years working on it on and off. Uh, sporadically in between all the speed paints and all the illustrations that i've done the past two years um so yeah uh this was kind of like my zen period you know like when i'm doing all my speed paints and whatnot having to go back to this after doing like a 10 hour illustration or a five hour speed paint it, it's always just relaxing because like i said you know a lot of the illustrations i do there's a lot of active troubleshooting that goes on i mean it's not active in my head and i'm not like consciously thinking of it but i you know sub in the my subconscious i know there's a lot of debate that happens um in my speed paints and in my shorter illustrations but for pieces like this where i'm just in the middle of the grind and i'm just doing the the detailing it's just it goes by so much smoother especially when the piece is coming out really good you know like so for this particular piece i i just absolutely love how it's going that it was thoroughly enjoyable when i was working on it versus like uh working on the piece uh mama's ice cream i think mama's ice cream was a long long grind as well and i wasn't really too happy with the result and i, I think during the middle of that process i started to get a little bum out because i knew that direction wise it just wasn't going very well um honestly at that point uh, I should have just gone back and just restarted from scratch, but I didn't. I stuck it out. I went ahead and finished that piece, and at the end of that piece, it just it wasn't the best piece altogether, honestly. Um, and then, yeah, I had some long grinds that came out like that. Uh, but there are some long grinds that just comes out really great. This was one of them. Um, this reminded me of my Star Wars fun, fan art. Uh, Star Wars, My Star Wars uh, fan art came out really, really well. Really, really good. And it was a long grind. And I spent quite a lot of time on it. And it was just so much fun working on it. Um, so, yeah. I don't really have much to say on it. Uh, I think the piece is very, very successful. It reads very well as a thumbnail. You can look the, at the thumbnail version of it on the lower right and it reads very well. So I know as a piece it's really, really good. So yeah, uh, we're almost coming up towards the end of this video. Uh, I could see that time wise it's almost towards the end. So. Um, so yeah, you'll just be watching me trying to uh, round off all my finishing touches, the finishing details that I put on there. Uh, you saw me added some special light effects, uh, some bloom. Um, I thought those, that was a really great um, added. <laughs> I thought that was a really nice uh, touch that I added to it. So yeah. But yeah, this piece is almost done. I'm almost there. I'm like rushing through this. I remember I did this all in one night because I knew that it was practically done and I didn't want it to stretch out any longer because I knew my time was up with it. There goes the sun. So yeah, and there's the little gazebo, the last gazebo that I worked on. So yeah. This piece is done. Thank you guys for watching it with me. I hope you guys uh, learn a thing or two. I will see you guys in the next time lapse video. Good night.